Trevor, thank you for having me to your classroom today. Tell me about your first indication that you were an artist. Uh, well, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher and uh, in high school I had a really supportive teacher in the art room and you know she supported me and I started to see some successes and that's really what spurred me to pursue it. Where did you first start seeing success? Because I'm looking through your work and I'm like, oh my god, you're really good at like everything. Your photography is incredible. Thank you. Um, but I mean, also your ceramics, your all of it. So what was kind of your first win that made you think, yeah, I'm gonna pursue this? Well, I have to give some credit to my parents. When I was little, they let me draw all over my walls. So I <gasps> was a muralist to begin, I guess. Oh, I um, hope my daughter's not watching this. <laughs> Who are we kidding? She's not. <laughs> well, it was an old room up in the attic, so they were like, okay, yeah, do what you want. It keeps you busy and yeah. out of trouble. So, yeah. um, that, and then in high school, I had some success with the Scholastics Art Competition in town. And, uh, you know, seeing that success, getting your work displayed downtown mm -hmm. and getting an award for it was really rewarding. And yeah. um, I would give a lot of credit to that. So you knew that you wanted to be a teacher and that then you wanted to pursue art. Yeah. So how did the world open up when you went to college? And I imagine started dabbling in different media that you maybe hadn't before. Mm -hmm. I had some really great professors, some that I still keep in contact today, Jacinda Russell, Ted Neal, Vance Bell. Uh, they were really supportive, especially in the ceramic studio when I was student teaching and uh, they gave me my own little studio space so that I, I could rush right after school and get to class a little bit later <laughs> um, and I could have my stuff all set up and ready to go. So. Wow. What do you think was the biggest challenge when it came to kind of digging into one medium or another? Is it hard to give one thing your attention when you are multi-talented? Yes. Uh, it's. Uh, also, as being a teacher, it's really hard to just set aside time to be creative myself. So a lot of it ends up being, you know, uh, demonstrating things for kids and then it's, okay, yeah, I guess I should be doing something with this right now so that gets developed. Um, right now I'm really into drawing and um, traveling and having fun with that. I was just gonna say, okay, so I, I was gonna ask what inspires you, but anybody has to look at your work for a split second and they know that it has to be travel and nature. Um, what is it about the world that um, you so love to capture? I love backpacking. I love just being immersed in a place without the world, you know, with all of technology and the cities and just being able to walk and just be in one spot and you know those encounters with wildlife or you know turning the corner and seeing some huge waterfall that just capture your attention is really special. So when you go backpacking do you always have a camera or do you go prepared to draw? What are you what are you hoping to do art wise when you're backpacking? I always bring my camera. I try and bring my sketchbook but more often than not I'm either too tired from backpacking or <laughs> just don't have time you know I've got to get over this mountain pass so I don't I can't really sit down and draw this. So. Okay. It's hard to set aside time to do that, but definitely a camera. Um, looking for references for drawings later, you know, um, whether it's a fox that just sat down right next to me and wanting to draw about that experience or crossing paths with a moose. So taking pictures and saving them for later to draw. So cool. Okay, so you had your successes in high school. Tell me how you have evolved as an artist since that time when it was like, okay, this is a win and, and you feel good about it and you feel like, you know, I'm gonna make this my career. How do you evolve from that point as an artist? So working on my own stuff kind of started off as, you know, demonstrations in class and then um, uh, IPFW hosted an art educators exhibition and I submitted a drawing. It was one that I had done in college, but it got first place. And I was like, okay, maybe, you know, I'm not just a teacher. Maybe I can go out <laughs> and do that as well. And yeah. so, um, getting to have artwork displayed downtown, other venues, having a solo show was really great and shows that I can do it as well and modeling that really is great for the kids too, that anyone can do it. So how do you find the time? I mean just logistically, <laughs> you're like I don't. No. Um, yeah, because it, it is so important not just to model it but also to to continue to grow yourself as an artist. So it, I mean is it like a weekend thing? 
a lot of times it's, okay, I've got like five minutes right here. I'm just going to pick up this marker and just start working a little bit. And then, you know, that starts to, oh yeah, I was really liking how this was going. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And then I end up late for dinner and my <laughs> wife's a little upset. Yeah. So getting uh, sidetracked is usually how it ends up. Yeah. Get, I end up getting work done. That's fair. Um, you mentioned that you're really into drawing right now, but you do so many other things. What is your favorite area to teach? to teach, uh, definitely working on the pottery wheel because it's so tough and you can't get it right away. You know, you've got to figure out your body and what works best for you. And so the kids see a lot of failure at the beginning. And um, we're always able to cut it open and there's a lot of teachable moments. So it's finally seeing kids able to overcome all of those failures. It's just a really concrete way that we can work through what failure looks like and how to improve. Yeah. I get to work with some really great kids and in terms of working with them, nothing really seems like a failure as long as they can just improve a little bit. And most of them do. Um, well, all of them do in some way. Yeah. Um, some more than others, but just being able to see a kid and celebrating the small victories is really great. What is the biggest challenge when it comes to to teaching art because some people don't have the passion, you know? I imagine that that's, that that's kind of tough when, when somebody comes into your class and they just, it's just not their thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can connect with those kids a little bit, um, mm -hmm. more so than some of the kids that are super passionate about art because I didn't really find that until later in high school. Yeah. Um, but being able to, you know, cater lessons to things that kids are interested in, you know, like not having a really narrow project um, and opening it up so that kids can kind of explore some things that they're interested in. Maybe they're interested in nature, maybe they don't care about nature and they want to draw their friends playing sports, that's great. Making it kind of important to them is really what gets them to go and like to connect with them that way. Is it difficult to teach someone how to draw? You, you mentioned that throwing pottery is kind of its own beast, mm -hmm. but when it comes to, to taking an image and, and translating it onto paper or canvas or whatever the case may be, how do you convey how to do that? Uh, bringing it down into simple steps, you know, um, more so observation skills, just getting the kids to pay attention to what exactly something looks like. You know, you kind of have this image in your head like, yeah, I know what a duck looks like. It has a bill, um, but starting to pay attention, okay, how long is it compared to the head? Or mm -hmm. how do you relate it to the size of the eye? Things like that. And um, being able to show them that and then having them work on it before a project really helps build those skills and um, they improve. What do you hope your students walk away with when they leave your class? Just that it's okay to be creative and anyone can do it too. Uh, the world needs more creative people even if you're going into uh, medicine or uh, law. People need to think creatively and this is the place to do it. You know, try something new, build your horizons and uh, don't be afraid. Uh, art is hard because it's so visible you know, if you go to a math class, your grade is, you can share your grade with your friends, but um, it's mostly with the teacher and your parents or even English or science. Art is very visible to everyone. And I mean, I'm putting their stuff out in the hallway. I'm making their friends look at their talent and um, just knowing that it's okay and celebrating those small victories of you improved a little bit, that's awesome. Yeah, but it takes, I mean, that's really vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And you know, high school is as vulnerable as it is. So I can imagine that getting kids kind of over that hump, some of them anyway, it might be tough. Yeah, it's very tough. Most of the time I say I, I feel like a cheerleader than a teacher <laughs> because, you know, I spend a little bit of time introducing some skill builders and then they get started and then my job is to just keep them to keep going, keep yeah. trying, keep, uh, don't give up and um, getting them to just improve, so. What has art taught you about yourself? Hmm, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, that I like being outdoors. I'm most inspired when I'm outside and you know I'm having those interactions with wildlife or um, nature um, and that I don't really know what anything looks like. You've got to uh -huh. sit and study it and um, that's what art has taught me. I'm, I feel 
relieved hearing you say that because you just mentioned, okay, well, we know what a duck looks like. And I'm like, yes, I can picture a duck, but could I picture it well enough to start making the mm -hmm. shapes? So yes, I don't know what anything looks like. Yeah. So, and that's okay. Okay, so then is it just a matter of finding good references and? Yeah, yeah. And breaking it down into smaller shapes, you know, paying attention to, okay, yeah, the bill is this big and the head is this big. Okay, so I've got to draw them the same length, things like that. What have you learned from your students? That there's inspiration everywhere. You know, kids get excited about the smallest little things, the quirkiest things, you know. Um, even like my still life objects, there's a ton of <laughs> random, it looks like junk just sitting on my table, but uh, they get so excited about like uh, a little duck uh, to draw and they name it and uh, anything can become inspiring. I love it. Well, maybe I would have been a better artist if I had had a teacher who is clearly as passionate as you are and as talented. Oh my gosh. Um, but people need to go look at your stuff. It's beautiful. So thank you for taking a moment out of your super busy schedule to talk with me today. Thank you.